These paintings remind me or look to me like uh, what you would see when you close your eyes after experiencing something because it's that uh, sort of dreamy quality which is where the dreamscape titles come from. But they're all done in an extremely different way and, and but really well done. I was intrigued by the, the people I've gotten to know in the, in the whole region uh, of the Southwest. And that people, the artists in this case, uh, we know why they came to live in these in the villages and the towns in, in this area. And they chose to be there, they chose to move there. And, and it was because they wanted the, the situation. It wasn't just that the, the buildings were kind of practical and, and great for studios, but it was the kind of retreat aspect. They were able to you know, you know, move from other lives and afford to live and work in these sort of special locations and really throw themselves into their work, concentrate on their art making. Sleep and paint. Sleep and pain, woke up and pain. The subject matter number one in Vlad's paintings are these islands. They're always viewed from above. And uh, that must have come from the vista of where he comes from. He comes from the mountains overlooking Dinarid Mountains in Croatia, overlooking the Adriatic Sea. He has that seamless, beautiful background, which some people think should stay like that, should really don't need anything on top of it, no more story, no more details. But it's not how he sees it. So he developed the vocabulary of things which happened on these dreamscapes of his. And a lot of them are quite similar, but then every single one is different again. And they are impossible not to recognize. That's like you sometimes you find a great kind of personality in your life with huge karma and you met that person in high school maybe and then 30 years later you see the guy say, ah, that's that, that's that guy. That's the same thing like Vladimir paintings. If uh, you really care and pay attention and you go and see one Vladimir painting in 10 years or 20 years, he will do certain slight changes in what he does, how he does, but you will recognize the handwriting. And that's a difficult thing to do. There's some greatest artists in Canadian contemporary art cannot really do it. I feel that a lot of my work is inspired, and as you see, God comes first with me, and it's stated one way or another on every piece of art I do. And uh, I lost my wife three years ago, and uh, I believe she's my guardian angel. Well, God is the perfect artist, and I make little copies of different things of God. Uh, I say he keeps me around for laughs at all the mistakes I make. Yeah, we are family. Yeah. Because we 
somehow lost our families on the road. You know, George is, if you want to go and uh, sound smart and uh, do the art historical references, he would uh, belong closely to something which was called Art Brut. Art Brut was same thing like what they call now in the States outsider art, was art of uh, unschooled, untrained people with visions, people which were maybe a little cuckoo in some ways, and they decided they need to express themselves in some kind of visual forms. He did a big body of work. Every single piece is uh, having its own story. It has its own artistic approach to how to tell that story. And it is incredible. So to me, and that's to me, because I'm a guy who spends good amount of my time looking at art, reading about art. And uh, I see in George, he is definitely an outsider. And it is funny that the, these 30, 40 pieces that George did are in a way touching uh, some kind of relationship line with so much of very good conceptual art done in Western world in last 50, 60, 70 years that is absolutely unbelievable. I grew up with the idea that I was the, the artist of Center View. And it was like, um, I had to find some way to connect with my own people. And so I decided to paint them and their lives. Bill, he paints only what he knows, what he sees, what is around him. He lives on a farm over there, and he sees all of these combines and cows and horses and the cowboys, and he has more freedom in use of color, and his best works are the ones where what he says, he throws in an odd color in the landscape. And uh, the other one is somehow he hit the kind of twisted perspective. And these are works that I believe are best uh, in his opus. It's expressionist in that it's full of action and life. It's not, I'm not precisely exactly the way it is. It's more like I, I, I express myself with my brush stroke and I express myself with my color. And uh, it's more that than, um, than I, I'm not trying to copy the image exactly the way it is. It's where I live and uh, it's a wonderful place to live. Then you have to go out and like this. This will be an important show for this area, for Saskatchewan, maybe wider. And I do hope for wider than that. And it was much more important than go and sell a couple of paintings. It was uh, to have them hang properly in a proper environment, have them seen by the people, and most importantly, to see them all together in all these three parts of the show by the people who did them. You can find art if you really look almost everywhere.